How's it going, everybody? And welcome back to the 42nd episode of HGO, the show where we talk about everything that's hot in the world of gaming. I'm your host, Ethan, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host with the co-host. It's Hunter. Hey, Hunter. How's it going? Oh, I'm doing swell. What's going on? Happy New Year and all that. Yeah, happy 2021, man. <laughs> how, how have you been? Have you had a nice break? We have essentially had like a two and a half week break. We've had quite a while. So how have you been doing? You doing yeah, good? It's been doing all right. It's been doing, you know... It'd be very hard for 2021 to be as bad as 2020. Oh, it's trying. So, it's, it's, it's it's trying. It's really trying, dude. It's trying. You know, we're also joined uh, by our other co-host, the wee wonder <clears> himself. <throat> it's Kyle. Hey, Kyle. You doing all right? Happy 2021. Yeah, dude, I'm doing well. Happy to be back for another season of this show. Happy to be talking oh, to all is, you guys again. Still, yeah, this is still season one. We're, we're, we, we are restarting. Nah, dude, new year, new season. No, the reason I'm saying no New Year, New Season yet is because I know that we've got a rebrand coming up, so I'm like, that's when it's New oh, Year, New Season. Oh, that's the season? Uh, yeah. Oh. So that's when it's happening. 52 episodes See, a season, dude. 52 episodes a season, you know. So you need to fill me in on these things. Oh, you Before see, I sound one like day. an idiot. Yeah, imagine, imagine if I did. That would make everything mm-hmm. a lot easier. But yeah, oh, uh, yeah, welcome back. Happy New Year, everybody. Hope that even though in these weird, this weird scenario that we're already in this week, that we're, you and yours <laughs> are doing all right. This is HGO, where every week we come together to talk about everything that's hot in the world and gaming, hot topics, you name it. Whatever's happening, we're talking about it. Uh, you can find us on podcast services everywhere. You name it. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Amazon. You want it? We're probably on there, to be fair. So head on over and hit us with a follow slash subscribe or whatever your podcast service calls uh, uh, that. Uh, and leave us a great review as well if you're on those services. We really would appreciate it. You can catch up with everything, uh, all the news and everything by going to our Twitter at hotgamersonly, twitter.com slash hotgamersonly. And if you want to subscribe on the YouTube where we publish uh, the weekly uh, video podcast and everything else, you can go to bit.ly. Get ready, new one, guys. bit.ly <laughs> slash hgoyt. HGO YouTube, HGOYT, and that'll take you there. Um, we'll get into it in, a, in uh, probably in about a month's time, why we've changed the thing. <laughs> but one of them, one of the reasons is so that we can see who's new in 2021, clicking that link and subscribing. So that we have an idea of who's mm. subscribing from old podcasts and who's subscribing because of new ones. It's a good mm. way to find out from this point who uh, subscribed after episode 42. We'll find so does out. the old link still work? Yeah, you can still use that old link if you want. Right. But from now on, uh, HGOYT nice, nice. is only five letters. It's a lot <clears> shorter. <throat> so uh, go ahead and use that one for now. Uh, we really would appreciate it. Uh, other than that, uh, we are back to regularly-ish scheduled programming. We've got new stuff coming up mainly in February. Uh, our channel anniversary is always in February, so we're saving most of that stuff till then. So a uh, bit of a slow pace for now uh we don't know what we're doing with reviews we might have some up this month we might just hold them all and then literally start releasing like six million reviews um at the start of february we'll see what happens hunter's just looking there because he's like ah yes all those great reviews he has like aegis rim and whatever whatever <laughs> sacrifice all those classics you, know, you gotta get those classic reviews in um, but no. Oh, thanks. you want me to write a review for that? I could. Yeah, you can. I don't know. It's up to you. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We've got some fun stuff coming up in February, at least. Uh, so I look forward to that. Um, finally, before we get started with the actual podcast, just want to say we hit it exactly when we left. So in all the others, in all in the two pre-record episodes, we were like, "Can you get us to seventy-five? And the answer was yes, you could. So thank you so much for seventy-five <laughs> subscribers on the main channel. We really do appreciate it. The uh, Crash Four All Clear Gems drunk thing will be happening soon. We're having to schedule it internally because yeah. everyone's got a load of things happening. Uh, I'm in another lockdown, uh, so everyone's got work. We've got a lot of stuff to plan out, so we want everyone to be there. So we'll let you know on the podcast when there's a firm date in place, and there will be a firm date in place, so that everyone has a chance. It's not just going to be on a random Thursday. I'm like, ah, oh, get it out of the way now. <laughs> We will put a date on it, so don't you worry about that. I do um, also want to add this. I am going to keep my Mario 64 incentive going until we hit 100. Before I had good... it cut off at the cutoff at the end of last year, but now I'm just going to keep it going. You're so generous, and I haven't decided. We'll see how terrible... Um, I was going to pull it out. I have 3D All-Stars now, um, unfortunately. So if, uh, if push comes to shove, I can join you on that. But we'll see how terrible the drunk KCG thing goes. Um, I also have it, so I could... Probably not. Yo, this sounds like we're getting a race. This sounds like we're having a terrible time. Um, (laughs) Race. But no, um, other than that, 
uh it'd be really nice if for the one year anniversary of hjo we get to 100 subscribers that'd be really that awesome. would be pretty so cool if we can push for march so if you're new here if you've got friends that you think would really enjoy the show please share it with your friends get them to subscribe to the youtube channel bit.ly slash hgo we'd love to get to 100 subscribers by the end of march um we'd really appreciate it and thank you so much for the support so far and let's hope that this year is as good as what we've done this year last year whatever i can't speak apparently give us a break it's been two weeks um i think that's everything i don't think i have anything else to say bit of a long one sorry about that guys but our topic for this episode is a chill one get us back into the mood next week it's going to be a uh, it's going to be what i think is going to be a mega ton of a episode i think that episode might go in down might go down as one of the longest episodes we ever do we're doing our 2021 predictions mm. and bets next week which is gonna be long. it's not passing p5 spoiler cast it isn't but at the same time i think it's gonna get i, I don't know what second. will pass that i don't know what we could do to pass that the strike is spoiler cast the, no the striker spoiler cast oh also. man with just the two of us there oh <laughs> Uh, Sam's getting it too, actually. Sam is getting it on release day. So oh, we, Sam's we gonna have, get yeah, it. We ha- we will have Sam as well. But no, um... is he gonna play it? <laughs> now that now that is the question. <laughs> you you tell me. Hey Sam, are you gonna do it? Let's find out. He's not gonna watch, so we'll never. He doesn't the watch the podcast. Yeah. We learned that last night. Yeah, but um, the topic for this week, yeah, that's oh, and stuff dippy. next week. <laughs> this week, our topic of conversation is games we missed in 2020. Essentially, over Christmas break. We've played games that we meant to play over the course of last year. We didn't get around to it, so we've done a bit of a catch-up. So we're just going to give you a load of first impressions. Um, as essentially, going forward for the for the channel and the podcast, is the idea is that for most of the games that we play that are especially new, there'll be first impressions on the podcast, then a review, and then if the game warrants it, a spoiler cast. So you'll have three ways to see how much we liked the game going forward. So that's kind of the idea. So if you're new to the podcast, we do these first impressions where we just basically talk about what we like, what we don't, how much we've played. We'll see how it goes. Um, Hunter's probably played the most out of all of us. Me and Kyle have kind of... Actually, Kyle, even you're ahead of me. I've slacked yeah, this yeah, Christmas. Yeah, speak for yourself, I've, mister. I've, I've, I've slacked this Christmas. So we'll get we'll start with you, Hunter, um, because um, I feel like you've got more to talk about. So if we get you started, then hey... I'll come up with something that I played this year, uh, this Christmas. So, Hunter, uh, hey, what have you played? Cool. <clears throat> I guess I'll start with No More Heroes, which isn't a new game by any stretch of the imagination, but it came to Switch a few months ago, and I got the chance to play uh, the first one and mm-hmm. part of two over break or over a little holiday gap there. And that was cool because it's been a long time since I've played them. Like, I played them back when they, back in like 2010, around yeah. when 2 mm-hmm. came out, so that was cool. No More Heroes isn't exactly an overwhelmingly, like, difficult or super in-depth kind of hack and slash, like Devil May Cry might be, but it is still enjoyable. You do a few swings, and then you get your little button prompt to go in a direction, and then people explode into <laughs> gory chunks. It's amazing. Yep. <sighs> the bosses are all fun and well they aren't all fun the majority most of the bosses are at least entertaining (laughs) yeah and you know you know the funny thing about the those games is that i knew that there were like a there were like levels in between the bosses but i couldn't for the life of you tell or for the life of me tell you what it entailed and it's mostly because it was just straight lines with people (laughs) Which is all it needs to be, really, mm-hmm. but just yeah, like it's death fodder. Isn't that the bosses are the highlights of that game? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, base right, Hunter. Picture this: we're getting off the rails already. There's one piece oh, of God. feedback I had from my no. Trust me, I have one piece of feedback, <clears> and everyone uh, that I got was we don't go off the rails enough. So, my question for you, Hunter, is: I'm new to No More Heroes. Why should I play it? Why should I play it? What's the gist? What should I care about? Why should I play No More Heroes? Okay, so the basic setup for No More Heroes is Travis, this weeb nerd, <laughs> wants to sleep with this lady named Sylvia. <laughs> I'm in. Who runs, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> who runs this assassin competition, right? So you've got these wacky assassins all trying to, like, kill each other to get to the top. And Travis makes a bet with Sylvia that if he does that, she'll, like, sleep with him or something. So, that's the gist of the first one. The second game 
goes into a different kind of story, but <laughs> the second from game there, starts out the just same. Just kind of tells its own story. <laughs> yeah, the uh, but from there it just kind of goes into you know it rinses and repeats. Encounter crazy boss, have fun interaction, kill crazy boss, move on to the next one, mm-hmm. and you know. <clears throat> cool. I, and you know it's not as difficult or involved as something like Devil May Cry, so you could just mash the buttons and do what the screen tells you to, and you'd exactly. be okay. Well, now it's it, it's a very brain dead <laughs> hack and slash. <laughs> very cool. Um, not as brain dead as I like. Not as brain dead as like a moose. Not game. as brain dead as like a Dynasty yeah. Warriors, but a little bit less involved than like yeah DMC. DMC or Bayonetta or Bayonetta that. even. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. Cool, because they are both available on the Switch right now. Um, they kind of sound yeah. they just shadow dropped them out of nowhere, and everyone was like, "Cool." They did. So it was uh, yeah. it was part of like a mini direct, and but I just yeah, to make sure to get. But th- th- you know those mini directs, yeah. they were all like, "And it's releasing today," and it, most people just didn't watch the directs. So they were like, "Oh, this is on the eShop now." Cool. <laughs> um, but no, I yeah. there are there two games that I intend to eventually go and pick up. But they Nintendo did the Nintendo classic of here's a really old game. Let's pay, make you pay more than you would want to pay for this really old game. So I was like, oh, I really want to play No More Heroes One and Two, and then I saw the price and I was like, I'm not gonna go yet. I'll wait till they're on sale. <laughs> but because <laughs> it's the classic Nintendo move, dude. Why sell an old game for ten dollars when you can sell it for thirty and smile? You know, it's like. You know, shout they're not to that expensive. Freeze, but they're a bit. They're a bit yeah. cheaper than that. They're like twenty dollars, twenty five, but they're still mm. quite. Yeah, they go for they go for twenty, and a lot of times they get slashed down by a few bucks. Like yeah. I got them both for like seventeen. Even when they released on the onto the eShop, they were at a discount for like a couple weeks. Yeah. You gotta love a game that always like when it starts out, it's on offer. You're like, oh, you gotta love it. Like, we don't even want to pay full price for the first. Like, <clears throat> the people that are gonna buy it in the first week, they're the suckers. They're the people that are gonna buy it no matter what. Why are you doing it? But no. I mean, some people just like to have, like, oh, hey, get it now. It, it incentivizes you to pick it up when you. I bought it like Hades on release. Was discounted by a few bucks when it uh, released. <laughs> Yeah, and I bet you at the same time they're really stomping their. They're probably like going, "Darn it, we shouldn't have made like the best game of last year and then put it at a discount because we probably could have made that money." Oh, um, uh, I don't know. I think they made Hades. enough money to warrant. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think they made enough money sure to be not. happy. Yeah, I know, but I, I think they'd be happy either way. I think the fact that out of all the games last year, that Hades is one that stands out for everybody is kind of. A sign of oh yeah we did a good job i think mm-hmm. that in either way they'll be happy about it um another game from 2020 i still haven't played i will hey, play one me day, too. guys one day one day it definitely is <laughs> sorry hunter where... sorry hunter <laughs> one day i promise you Join one the day club. <laughs> i can only play one switch i can only play one game on my switch a year you know how this goes um so there oh, you go man. no more i no... guess i'm gonna have to wait a little while since Hopefully, Breath of the Wild too is out this year. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, find out, kids. Um, and where we will confirm, games journalists over here will confirm whether Breath of the Wild two comes out this year. Avid journalist. Oh well. <laughs> so yeah, no more heroes. Would you recommend Hunter? Oh yeah, totally. If you're into like, if you're into wacky personalities and you know, boss gauntlets, go for it. Hack and slash stuff. Yeah, fun times. Cool. So I'm going to I'm going to go next mainly because we talked about the game that I'm going to talk about that I've mainly been playing. It's a game that we actually talked about not too long ago on the podcast, so I feel like if I get mine out of the way cuz mine is definitely the least interesting out of everyone's just because hey, at least Kyle's played some 2020 games, but they were earlier on in the run. So uh we can talk about them again without it feeling like we're stepping on old ground again. But uh I finally did it, guys. Um can I grab the game? There we go. I did it. I have it. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Number Whoa. one Breath of the Wild fan here is finally Go playing this thing. Um, Fires! <laughs> my cable is tangled in my uh, chair, so that's great. Get hype. A get hype moment of 2020. <laughs> Audio <laughs> listeners, if I am... I an am epic drunk, pog moment. An epic pog moment. Um, but no. 
Uh, I'm play- I've been playing Harrow Wars Age of Calamity, and I've been joking with Kyle and Hunter like the past couple of days saying, I'm trying to finish it for the podcast. I'm trying to finish it for the podcast. And then today, I was like, I'm really running this to the edge, but I'm going to try and finish it today. So, guys, guess what? I didn't fucking finish it. <laughs> I'm literally, I've done everything except for the final mission. I've done all the side content that's available before the end. I sure I'm sure the map explodes again once I finish the game, and that's when I'll say, "Ha ha, no thank you," and walk away. Um, but <laughs> I've lit- I was gonna get them. I switch up and read the numbers out to you, but I've done 19 main quests, 120 odd side quests, and I don't know. Like I've not gone for the Korok seeds and stuff like that. I'm not that desperate, but um, I've played a lot of this game. Um, Hunter's got a review up on the channel. Uh, bit.ly slash really if you would like to. It. Yeah, Hunter <laughs> really liked it. <laughs> Go and... Watch it, not read it. I didn't write it. What am I? Well, I did. I mean, you did write it. Up. We could publish them, but why would we do that? Um, people hate reading. Oh yeah, you're gonna you're gonna get a you're gonna get a blog. Yeah, we'll just we'll just make a website. Yeah, we'll make a website. Why not, dude? <laughs> I just I always think I always like, hey, that's that's a reason. Just like kind of re like just kind of reword it so that it fits a text version. But then I'm just like knowing my grammar and my spelling, probably not the best idea. And I'm definitely not it's paying true. for Grammarly again. Um, you can also just yeah. talk to me, Ethan. Y- yeah, but you that's know not... the writing minor. Yeah, but that's not a good life lesson. If I'm in the future, like, if I ever have to, like, write a paper, like, a scientific paper, or if I go into, like, some kind of journalism, I have to write something, the best practice isn't, oh, yeah, let's then go pass it to Kyle every time. Like, I don't want to be 45 and go, right, time to hit up Kyle. I've got something for him to spell. I hope by 45 you would know where to put an apostrophe. How dare you, sir. Right, let's get back on topic, because I don't like the no! conversations going. No, we're discussing your grammar issues. Hold on, by 45, would you want to be... Pr- Paying for Grammarly, then? <laughs> <laughs> this just opens more questions, Ethan. At this rate, yeah, I'd like to have the funds to pay for Grammarly by the end I'm on 45, but in this economy... I can just teach you grammar. It's not yeah. hard. To be fair, you already not... speak English. I'm not... I'm, to be fair, I'm usually... I'm all, I'm lazy with my grammar. I'm not t- if I actually go and think about it, then I am. But sometimes I'm just like meh, 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 done and don't double check. Yeah, that's the other thing. When I'm writing scripts for reviews and stuff, I don't necessarily write it exactly as you should for someone to read it. I just kind of write it so that I know what I want to say. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it's you know, it, not... yeah. You kind of you're writing a script for yourself, not necessarily a f- formal piece of like li- like yeah. journalism or right. critique. Um, but anyway, I've been playing Hyrule Warriors. I've played for like 35 hours. And my consensus is, it's, it's alright. It's pretty good. Um, <laughs> I, I have a love-hate relationship with this game because it's it's obviously Breath, more Breath of the Wild story, which I really like. But that story is also completely fucking stupid. So there's that. Um, I'll, I'll say this. The, the back of the box art says experience a story set a hundred years before the legend of zelda breath of the wild that's the only thing this game advertises and that's a fucking misadvertisement right there that's not even (laughs) it's technically true it's technically true the best kind of correct but they should put like an asterisk here and go kind of maybe play the game and you might find out what we're talking about that's what they should really say because yes it's kind of set before breath of the wild and it's but it's can- for most part, me and Hunter have been calling it non-canon because if it is canon, we're coming for you, Alnuma. Uh, <laughs> There's no way that that could possibly be but canon. No, um, hmm. the story is more Breath of the Wild, which I love the characters of Breath of the Wild and I love the setting. But the story is extremely goofy, and just like Breath of the Wild's problem, can someone please on the audio team for these video games learn how to mix? audio correctly because the number of times where a song's been too loud and the audio's been too quiet or the opposite where there's like this epic moment where the music's supposed to be blaring and all i can hear is someone breathing into their microphone can we please get an audio balance and this is just a problem with nintendo games in general where sometimes i'm like oh this music's really cool shame i can't hear zelda underneath it because all i can hear is the fucking drums going at ham um but no Performances are pretty good as well, um, for the most part. But if you hated the Breath of the Wild performances, you're not gonna like these <laughs> ones because they kind they've kind of doubled down on the anime aesthetic of the Breath of the Wild cast of 
you know, hit or miss character like voices. Like some people hate Zelda. For so I've noticed. I don't understand I don't why hate. either. I <laughs> thought Zelda was fine. I think she's. Fi- I think I like her voice. I think sometimes her delivery is a bit off. Like on some of the lines, like tone and just the way she says it is sometimes a bit off. But I don't hate it as much as everyone else does. But there are way worse characters in this game. For example, Impa, who is the most i don't know who thought that's a great casting it wasn't um that character just to me is a basically just a current day teenager which the, the amount of references they do like they have an elvis they have a they have a character that's very elvis which who was in the original breath of the wild and was very elvis in that too but now because he talks more all he does is elvis shit the entire time where he'll do shit like <laughs> yeah and fucking like pretend he's at a disco all the time but like that's just because you got more Kyle's just like what the fuck is Breath of the Wild <laughs> no no what's going on in my brain right now is none of you I don't know if either of you watched Digimon growing up but there was one of the Digimon in an epi- in a few episodes was an Elvis impersonator oh, yeah. and it, he was like a monkey oh, I think nice. memory is hazy but that's all oh, I'm thinking great. about yeah monkey. I mean, I've been talking, yeah, but, Bye, monkey. but yeah, there's there's a couple of characters, which should be fair, Impa's one of my favorite characters to play as, but her performance just doesn't do it for me. Same with Robbie and same with Pura. Those what three in particular that... are the trinity of characters that I just do not like performance wise at all. Anyway, Hunter, you were going to say something. weird because Pura's like a uh, voice actress is like a very reputable. It was weird because Pura's voice actress is like, I forget what her name is, but kate something or other she was the boy she did the jump up superstar and is the voice no of like she Sakura did from naruto yeah really? you yeah, cannot tell you cannot her, tell from that performance so it's really weird but i think what i was gonna say is about impa specifically it's she's really weird in the sense that she is the like impa has never been like that it has always been like this kind of stoic stoic wiser uh, yeah. ninja type of character and <clears throat> and it didn't really bother me i thought it was i was like oh you're doing something different fair enough i don't know it just kind of feels out of place and again it's the audio mixing as well the audio and, mixing has uh, massive problems where some characters are quieter than others when they're talking to each other and like impers the input was obviously i assume that some of this game was recorded during covid is what my assumption is is why the some of the performances and capture wise is really off but that's definitely one of them um but no other than other than let's move on to the actual game the game's actually good if you don't like muso you're not gonna like it is the the, basically what you said hunter and i completely agree with you um the frame rate is fucking awful Uh, (laughs) um i think you went yeah, I think you were a bit kinder than I would have been to the game, but <laughs> the game's really fun, so I played through the terrible frame rate, so that's something to say about the game, but my god, does it run all... Like, this is like, Nintendo, this is taking the piss, really. It shouldn't run this bad. I've had times where the game has frozen and has had to wait a couple of seconds. My game went down to zero frames per second. The game had to stop <laughs> to think and calculate everything that was happening and then carry on. It was really weird. I don't it think happened. that ever happened to me, but... Yeah, it mainly happened in the know. Guardian fights, which are the worst part of uh... the game. Um, they're basically a bunch of... They're basically, imagine, you're, you're controlling the... You're basically, you're, you're controlling the, uh, the the Divine Beasts, sorry, not the Guardian fights, the Divine Beasts, yeah. should I say. You're playing as the Divine Beasts. So imagine you're a massive fuck-off vehicle killing thousands of things around you with massive flashy attacks and then just expect what the frame rate's going to be like when I'm talking yeah. about that frame rate. It just doesn't work. But no. I, I've played Kingdom Hearts 3. I know how that how that math problem goes. Yeah, but I, I, it's, it's way worse than Kingdom Hearts 3. The um, Divine Beasts are like an interesting thing to me just because like, you know... It would be really cool to have army wrecking capabilities with one of those things, but you already do that as your other players, so it's not <laughs> as novel as you would expect. It would have been more... I feel like the better mechanic would have been to have the ability as the champions to be fighting, and then after a certain amount of time, call in your Divine Beast, and then do a little thing with yeah. it, and then move back in, instead of having levels 
solely based on them because they basically just become auto scrollers because you're just doing the same route every time blowing the same things up and moving on and there's no challenge to them yeah um but no i mean it's not like there's much of a challenge to most there's no challenge to this game (laughs) i'm playing on normal and i'm sitting here going this is way too easy i'm way over leveled i'm level 76 the last mission's 51 or 52 so i'm really over leveled Mm. um but the game's fun and it's got that breath of the wild quirk to it it kind of has that experimental Breath of the Wild feel to it where you can do things that like a bit like how in Breath of the Wild you'd be like, oh, can I if I push this off the rock if I push this off a cliff, what will happen? So like that. You can do those kinds of things with the combat. It's obviously more restrictive, but you can do stuff like, oh, what if I freeze someone in a staggered state and they stay staggered for longer and you can carry on beating down their shield and stuff like that. There's some cool mechanics that you can do with yeah. that, which feels Breath of the Wild and it's pretty cool. Um but no, it's it's a good game. It has its problems, but hey, it's good. It will not get thrown today. It'll go Hooray. back on the shelf. Congratulations, High War Warriors. Um, it's pretty good. You should pick it up if you like Zelda and you don't mind hack and, brainwashed hack and slash where you don't think and you watch a YouTube video next to you while you play. <laughs> there you go. That is my High War Warriors first impression slash review. Kyle, what have you played mainly? All right. Uh, I guess I'll start out with the one I've played, the game I've played the least so far, which That's is scary. Final Fantasy VII Remake. Oh my god. Final Fantasy so, VII Remake, one of uh, HGO's Game of the Year last year. Wow. Correct. And also Darts of the Year. I did get the Darts did game. It? Darts is fun. Yeah. No, Persona I'll give you that. Royal won Darts of the Year. because we're Yeah, but Darts is still funny. The... Of the year. You gave your Game of the Year to... You, you gave, gave your game of the year to Persona Five, and I gave it to Hades. Yeah, but I yeah, when I did Final Fantasy VII get game of the year we, from us? We didn't. We didn't pick one game of the year. At least I, I picked like I picked three games of the year, and one of them was my favorite. I picked like all of my list. I consider games of the year. I don't have one. I don't choose my children. Kyle, move on. Move on. E- move on. What's the answer, I Ethan? To, <laughs> I need to sort my cable out. Move on. Oh my god. <laughs> Always about you, isn't it? <laughs> Anyways, Final Fantasy VII re- <laughs> Remake is an interesting game so far. I've only played up to... I beat the third chapter. And that third chapter... <laughs> chapter three. It was really slow, and it really burned me out on wanting to keep playing. But mm. according to Ethan, it picks up at the chapter I, I stopped what at. what specifically happens in chapter three. Fucking yeah. nothing. That's what. It's it's the free roam around the slums. It's go around and do missions. Oh, and I told so Kyle, I told Kyle, yeah, missions. yeah. I told Kyle that okay. he'd exactly stopped at the exact point where it starts picking up because after that you have the Jesse motorbike section, which is really fucking good. Yeah. Yeah, the next chapter is really good. The game picks up from that point and the other yeah. two side quest uh, areas are much better because... One of them is with Aerith. One of the, the, the Aerith one are feels a lot more interesting. Yeah, the Aerith one's more interesting, and then the other one is uh, in the uh, I don't remember what the town's called, like the nightlife, like district area, which is really cool. Wall market. Wall market. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, Cal, sorry, carry on. But yeah, um, I enjoyed the first couple chapters. Chapter one was a ton of fun, and chapter two was very different from what I was expecting. I didn't wasn't expecting like visions of sephiroth to show up that early yeah that so happens. that visions kind of... of sephiroth danced in his head <laughs> <laughs> so yeah game is game is interesting so far i will say that much as a cop out for giving an actual opinion on it chapter three can go suck it though that was very boring <laughs> and went yeah, on for way too was... long yeah it I mean, the side missions are optional. You don't have to do them. Um, yeah. <laughs> in fact, chapter probably three, won't. Chapter three is the only one where you don't have to do any side missions for any relation because the side missions are usually related to uh, the dresses. And chapter three is you pick you when Tifa gives you that question in chapter three, you can just pick, so it doesn't matter. So you can just not do yeah. the side missions in that section where you have to with Aerith. <laughs> so there you go, and Cloud as well. There you go. Anyway, Alrighty. How do you feel about the game? I'm gameplay? sure I'll learn what that means later. You're a gameplay. What? You're a little. You're a. You're a Square Enix gameplay nerd. How? How are you feeling about mm-hmm. the ATB and all that jazz? 
Um, so when I originally played the demo back a million years when that came out, yeah, I think back it was in the actually day. back it was in like January or February. Was that January? Like, it maybe February. I think I think Mar- it was March. I think it was the start of March. I'll fact check. <sighs> no, because I remember because I had gone to uh, TRG Throne Controllers. And that was at the end of February. Yeah, it was it was the second of March. Like, yeah. Cause I drove man. back at night and the trailer released or the demo released that day. Oh, that's it. Square Enix put it up on the PlayStation store in January and it was the worst kept secret ever because it got leaked and everyone just yeah. knew it and everyone was uh, just yeah. yelling at Square Enix for two months to release it. it was <laughs> that was it. All right. Yeah. yeah. So anyways, when I had originally played the demo, I wasn't really too big on the on the ATB, how that was implemented, because it just felt it's the usual Square Enix where they're just like, we don't know if we want to be full action RPG or use menus in combat. So we'll do some weird hybrid that is gross and not intuitive at all. Yes. But I'm starting to get used to it. Like, it's just gelling with me now. The shortcut menu a la Kingdom Hearts is also nice to have cuts out on having to do any menuing i just like how you were saying that as i was internally thinking this is my favorite square in its combat system <laughs> like i'm just sitting here and he's like i don't know it's really i really fucking love that system um it's better than all of the other action rpg menu hybridizations that they've tried to do so far yeah in my opinion and i don't know to me i think main my main problem with stuff like kingdom hearts is you have this list of moves and there's so many moves you can do and it's all on this little menu and for someone that's trying to learn the game it's really hard to learn what everything does and try new things because you're like what's the combination again or oh did i i forgot to bind it to a shortcut to make it easier for myself or let me go through all these fucking summons that i wanted to test and stuff like that whereas with the mm-hmm. atb cage just having it be at at a button press the game grinds to a crawl like a bit like a turn-based rpg and you can go okay let me look through my stuff what can i do yeah it really and that that is nice to have and then also, like as like uh, you mentioned, they have the shortcut menu from Kingdom Hearts. So if you don't want to be fucking slowing down time, you can just start going. You can start just remembering your button combinations <laughs> and having fun. Especially with characters like uh, like you haven't got them yet, but especially with Aerith and Tifa, you can very much just use their shortcuts all the time and never really have to go into the menu that much. So yeah, those are a lot more yeah, fast paced. Myself using the shortcuts with playing as Tifa a lot more. Yeah. Tifa's a bunch of fun to play as. She really is. She's my favorite character out of the four of them, to be honest, yeah. to play as. She's really fun. I At the moment, Barrett's probably my least favorite. Yeah. Just he, because he's, 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 it's he's, way too slow-paced for me. He feels, yeah, but... and he feels, he feels kind of situational as well. It only feels like, yeah. oh, I need to use him now because there's a turret on a wall I can't get to. <laughs> this thing is flying yeah. above my head. I can't hit it with my sword. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Wah! Exactly, but no. Why don't you just throw your sword, Cloud? <laughs> Tifa, throw me at the throw me at this bug. If it was Kingdom Hearts, that's what would happen. Just people would just start throwing at each other magic. <laughs> Why not? Uh, it was my favorite Kingdom of Hearts. Advent Children, where it the, was. The party it was an Advent Children throwing Cloud at a Bahamut. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was hype as hell, dude. Like everything sure in that movie. It was really cool, actually. I liked, I liked that scene a lot. I'm you telling know, you, Ethan, we should watch it. Actually, happened. I'm not what movie, I. It's pretty good. I am. I have strictly sworn to this. I'm strictly sworn to this path now. Of I don't care about what Final Fantasy VII was. I like going down this road of being blind to everything, except for the the quote unquote spoiler that everyone on the planet knows. Um, <laughs> it's not a spoiler. Yeah, I like being I like being blind to everything else, and I just I mm. I don't know. There's something about going on this Nomura wacky wild ride journey of twists and turns, and not knowing what a twist and turn like what is a twist and a turn, and what is original, and just going down it and experiencing it like yeah, having a fresh no, perspective actually, on it. Having no I'm idea. actually in the same boat as you here because I do know stuff about the original Final Fantasy VII, but I never played it. Mm. The first time I saw Cloud was in Kingdom Hearts One. That was my exposure to Final Fantasy. And that was in when he was talking to fucking Hades. James Woods, it was nuts. Six-year-old yeah. me could not comprehend that. But, uh, so Mostly because I, I didn't know who the other guy was. 
but yeah, I, I'm, I'm basically, I've sworn myself onto this path now of I'm not going to touch, th- people are always like, oh, you can still play the original. I'm like, I don't know if I want to. I like not knowing anything. Like people are like, people are sitting there going, I don't, what are they going to do next? Who knows? What, what twists and turns are they going to take? Where I'm just like, I don't know at what at all happens next. I know that one thing happens at some point in the story. I don't know where. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to just go through it blind and see what actually happens and see. Also, it's cool to have a different perspective on it yeah. to everyone else because I feel like everyone out, a majority of people, at least on podcasts and who talk about it online like this, have played the original and are very much going. This is how I feel compared to the original and my nostalgia bias and stuff like that. It's nice to just go and be like, mm-hmm. I don't care about Final Fantasy, so here's my thoughts on it. You know, I <laughs> haven't. Not that I don't care. I've not played a Final Fantasy. I guess is the better way of saying it. Because I'm sure Dude, I'll play you should. Others. They're really fun. Yeah, it's one of those things where I just think I'm just going to carry on going now. So when 16 comes out, I'll probably check it out. But going <laughs> back is like, oh, do you want to go touch 15? I own a copy of 15. I don't want to touch it. <laughs> oh, don't do that one. Yeah, <laughs> don't do that <laughs> one. A little further. Uh, yeah, so maybe not. But no. Glad to you enjoy it. You'll have to let us know what your full thoughts when you finish the game. Um, oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Hunter, what else have you played? I, I kind of gave some of them away uh, earlier on, but um, go on. <laughs> I'll act shocked just for oh, yeah. you. I'll act shocked. Audio listeners, you will not. All right. Get so the other game you. I played to completion while we were on our little gap there was Senua's Sacrifice, which I believe is the final holdout from 2017 of games that were really good that I missed that year. Mm. So yeah, it is very good. Honestly, it's. Is it now? Uh, yeah. I also haven't played it like, yet. So, <laughs> so for does. the uninformed, what is this game? That's hey. a great question. That's a well, good, good job, Hunt, uh, good yeah. job Hunter. Go Who on. am I, Ethan? I was going, Who what am I? I was trying to, what I was trying to say was, what's my fucking job. name? Yeah, what I was trying to say was, good job, Hunter, as in to say that. But oh, I just like went, a comma good job, Hunter. With grammar. Yeah. Fucking move on, Hunter. What no, <laughs> we will fix your okay, grammar so by the end of this year. Sacrifice is a game made by is a game made by Ninja Theory. It's about Senua, this lady whose lover got killed, and she wants to venture into the Norse underworld to make a deal with the goddess of death to set his soul free. Understandable. Uh, the crux of the game is <laughs> the crux of the game is that she also has like psychosis or something. It's not exactly specified, but she's constantly hearing like voices in her head, and it makes things very hard for her. This is actually one of the very few games where I'd be like, all right, I don't say this often, but play it with headphones. It makes the experience <laughs> way better. Really? Like, definitively. Because <laughs> then you can, like, actually hear the voices talking to her, <laughs> like, right next to you, and it's great. That's That sounds pretty cool. So, like, sound design in that game is impeccable. Mm-hmm. The uh, For being a small team like Ninja Theory with you know self-published no backing from anyone like capcom like they did with the the dmc reboot for example Mm. they just made it themselves it looks really good uh you know gameplay wise it boils down into combat which you know light attack heavy attack and a kick Mm -hmm. kick is nice it interrupts people and it's fun to run and do it (laughs) but yeah <laughs> great journalism there dude. great journalism if you want more like that go yeah check great out journalism like <laughs> great journalism for the game that's three years old yeah you know, guys this the part where we start kicking <laughs> for more great opinions like that be sure to check out our reviews guys <laughs> i love kicking but, them yeah. let's go <laughs> Stick that the, on the, box, the combat Ninja isn't dude. like <laughs> the combat isn't like super in depth it's just those three things, but it works well. Oh, yeah, and a parry. A really satisfying oh, parry. Hell yeah. When it works. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, it, the best feeling that, that game has is when, like, narration kicks in, telling Senua that she can't do anything and that she's going to die and all that. And then you, like, parry one of the monsters attacking you, and then you do a really sweet slow motion attack. Oh, um, it feels so good. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. So it's not super in-depth and it's not like overwhelmingly challenging, 
I always felt like I was about to die right as I finished the fight. So it was <laughs> good and it was hard enough to keep me like on my toes, but not like kicking me in the face the whole game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess my two and... questions I have, I'll give you the first one. Did it live up to the hype? Because this is a game that I don't think I've heard a negative thing said about it in terms of if there was stuff, I think there was like a couple of bugs and performance stuff, but everyone was like, they're a small studio, they're working on it. And then they eventually fixed that kind of stuff and moved up. Like everyone was like, great. But I've not heard like a single person come out of Hellblade and go, oh, I didn't like that. So it's interesting. What what were you, how do you feel? Does it live it live up to everyone else's reactions? Uh, yeah, I really like it. As far as like, you know, you're mostly going into it for the interesting story that they're trying to tell. They do have combative sections, but it's not like super heavy on the combative stuff. And the gameplay in between is mostly walking and or this puzzle solving where, you know, it has like the little Norse runes like like that. He's kind of going in. The... No, that's a new level of show and tell for for audio listeners. He just brought something out with Nordic runes. <laughs> oh, on it's it. a bracelet. I've always been wearing this. It's just my. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually the my, produ- my coat covers it up. <laughs> the production value of this show has just skyrocketed, guys. <laughs> audio listeners, you just missed out. We just took show and tell to a new level. 2021, ladies and gentlemen, it's our year. Right, anyway, kind but, of... Yeah, anyway, so <laughs> basically, the uh, when you're not walking just from point A to point B, the things that interrupt it that aren't combat are you, you get these little gates with those Norse runes on it, and you're going and like looking around for things that line up in the environment that make them, and that like unseals it. Mm-hmm. It's not like super difficult to find. You're not going to be like scratching your head in a puzzle game sort of way being like where could this possibly be mostly you run around until you see that like you'll see the rune pop up and a bunch of red smaller versions of it indicating that you're nearby and then you gotta find it that way and line it up so it's not like super crazy in that regard you're mostly going in for the story it's not like super intense as far as the gameplay goes in any other regard Mm-hmm. but i think as an overall package it is really good <clears throat> i did like it a lot mm. my follow-up question right and this is i'm gonna need you're gonna need your you're gonna need your thinking glasses on right now Hunter, right? <laughs> this is the peak of video game model. journalism right here thinking okay glasses. I, 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 is this is this is this something that i've just had no that this is just something that someone said to me my whole life and now no one else has heard of this i know there's thinking cap as well but, I, i've only heard thinking cap yeah there's thinking cap as well but i've heard people say thinking Ga- please don't tell me my life's a lie I've i don't need a mental thinking breakdown glasses maybe it's a uk thing please if you're in the uk please tell me that i'm not going <laughs> mentally insane because I, I don't know oh it must have been a show or something that said thinking glasses anyway moving on so <laughs> hunter putting on your metaphorical thinking glasses or cap. <laughs> <laughs> all right I it does how are you excited for Hellblade two? Does this make the idea I of getting an X? Ex- I go, was... let me finish the question. <laughs> Do you think this is worth getting an Xbox for? And part three, here's my thing: is does Hellblade feel like a game that needs a sequel? Because from everything I've heard about Hellblade, it doesn't seem like the kind of game that you just like. When they announced Hellblade two, I was like. They're doing a sequel to this? Okay, weird. Anyway, those are my three. That's my three part question, Hunter. Okay, so I wouldn't go out of my way to get an Xbox for just that game. It's not quite like if if Xbox got like a super giant exclusivity deal, it would be game over. I'd buy both machines. Without <laughs> both of them. But well, not both. Not both. Not, not not like both Xboxes. I mean, like I'd buy a PlayStation Five and then an xbox as well. no i just i just think you meant both of them you just gotta hold the ass in your arms the entire not even use it. <laughs> but uh this is so my backup i fridge. like when <laughs> when senua saga comes out i'm not gonna be like sprinting to the store to buy an xbox for just that like it may eventually you know be death of a thousand cuts where i'll go and get one after they have other enticing things mm-hmm. if they manage to get enough but they're working on it <laughs> yeah, they they stole Todd Howard. It's definitely one that if, 
Mm-hmm. Oh man, I don't know. It's definitely one that if you have an Xbox when Senua Saga comes out, I would definitely pick it up. Especially if you question. have Game Pass. It's just like, yeah. That's my thing with that's but, honestly my thing with Xbox is that when they start actually releasing exclusives, the Xbox is going to be a really easy buy when all you have to consider is oh I just need the box and then I can just have a subs- <laughs> like literally I can just get their subscription for a month and play all of their exclusives for that month for like cheaper well, yeah, than it and would. Then you'll be set for like yeah. the year for Xbox exclusives. Yeah. <laughs> But hey, but then at the same time, you don't have to spend sixty dollars on a game each time, you know. So hey, wins and losses. Yeah. But okay, no. what was part two of your question? Part, well, you kind of answered parts one and two. Was are you excited for see this for two, and would you buy an Xbox over it? Part three was does the do you think the game needs a sequel slash did it set up for a sequel? Because I've always been interested about that. Okay, so the story of this game is rather self-contained, but it doesn't like totally close itself off to being able to have a sequel okay so it's not like it. i wouldn't have expected there to be a sequel from playing it like if i played it back in 2017 but i could have seen the possibility of there being one especially after the success that it had mm-hmm. okay <clears throat> there we go then uh Hellblade. For the th- for the three people that haven't ch- played it, aka Kyle, myself, and the other person watching that hasn't played it, uh, <laughs> got Hunter's recommendation. Perfect. Genuinely, yeah, I've never even heard of this game. <sighs> That's it. Really? If if, if, really? if 2021 is the year that Ethan fixes his grammar, it's the year that Kyle learns that video games that come out in modern <laughs> video games come out where we're gonna go. So Kyle, this is. <laughs> This is Breath of the Wild 2. It's new. Oh, no. <laughs> Look, That'd just because be I play old games doesn't mean I, I don't can't pay wait. attention I can't, to new games. I honestly, I can't, I can't wait for next you week's You know, episode. if Ghost of Tsushima didn't disappoint him, it would have been... Oof, it would have been less of an indictment on true. modern games too. True. I can't it's wait true. for next. I can't wait for next week for Kyle for this betting special for Kyle's picks because Kyle's honestly just going to be like... I guess this one sounds cool. I'll take this I... one, please. <laughs> I have no idea what's going to happen next week. It'll be funny. It'll be funny. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, my other game that I've been playing, because I've only played two, and this one's a cop-out. Um, so we'll very quickly talk about it. But I can count it as new, because the next-gen version came out, and I've been playing that. That is what I've been using my UFO for, ladies and gentlemen, is the next-gen version of Destiny. <laughs> um, I've been playing a hell... I've been playing a hell of a lot of Destiny 2, and my friend got me back into it. My friend was like, hey, we, we, he gets very, he, he very much is like, goes all in when he goes in on something. So he was like, yo, I've been playing Destiny 2. Do you want to play it again? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if people will be committed to playing it. And he'd be like, no, nah, I've just played it for like eight hours straight. And we, like, I need someone to play this with. So I was like, okay, I guess I'm picking up Destiny 2 again and downloaded it. It also helped that I bought a Destiny 2 expansion and then never played that expansion. So I played that. Um, and man, Destiny is such a weird game because if you don't have friends to play it with, I could not, re- like, I could n- never recommend it. It'd be like the last game I'd go to recommend if you don't have a friend to play it with <laughs> because everything, whether it's Strikes, which are basically co op missions, or if it's The Crucible, which is the multiplayer, or Gambit, which is this really cool PvE. It's a really, it's a really cool mode that I hadn't played before. It's two years old. I'm, I know I'm behind the times here, but Gambit is a mode where you have to kill PVE enemies, and when you kill them, you collect like the remnants of them, and when you cl- and you put them when you put them in the bank, you shoot massively overpowered enemies to the other side to the other team that then start destroying them. So it's like a kill enemies to fuck with the other team and win. It's a really oh, cool game. So it's though. like competitive Tetris where you clear blocks yeah. and send the trash stuff to other people. Yeah, it, ca- yeah, it right. kind of is like Tetris 99 in that way where you yeah, you, def- you defeat enemies, you bank your moats as they're called, and you send shit to the other side for them to have to deal with. And it's a really cool idea. And then you can invade the other person's realm and start killing them and stealing their stuff. It's a really cool game mode. Um, but man, Destiny 2 reminds me of how much money went into Destiny. It's the most expensive video game I've ever played from just the way it looks and the presentation. From the menus to everything. It's so fucking damn good looking, man. It's so good looking. 
and it runs at 60 on PS5, and it's a really good time, and it's free to play now. Um, if if you don't care about the expansion and you just want to play Gambit or Crucible or all the new light stuff, which is basically they've kind of brought back the Destiny 1 intro and redone it so that it's new for people that are coming in for now. But there's this whole free-to-play section of it. And when it was tied to Activision, all these expansions I thought were scummy and terrible because you needed all the expansions to play. It'd be like, oh, if you want to catch up on year two, you've got to buy year, you've got to buy the base game and the year one expansions <laughs> and then the year two expansion. Oh, then you no. can join in the club. Classic. Oh, no. Whereas now That's... that Activision's fucked off out of the equation and Bungie's on their <laughs> own. Wow. Yeah, now that, now that Bungie's on their own, now it is Destiny 2 base game is free to play. And if you want to buy an expansion, you can buy any of them, but you don't need any of them to play. And you can just pick and choose. If you want to play the new one beyond like you don't need the two previous ones to play that. You can just pick and choose what you want and play what you want. And if you want a story mode, buy the expansions. And they've really cleaned that game up and it's really fucking good. So um, shout outs to Bungie. Ne- next time I see Destiny 2 nominated for like best ongoing game or whatever, I won't laugh because it- they actually are doing a good job. <laughs> um so yeah fair play and it's god it's a good game it's a really good game i can see why people like bungie um (laughs) as someone that didn't really care for halo that much i can see why people really like bungie because damn they do make good games so yeah the next gen version of destiny 2 is very good so pick it up if you like destiny and if you don't like destiny maybe try it if you like shooters because it's a really good shooter and if you don't like shooters don't fucking play it simple as that (laughs) That is the take of the century. <laughs> that we though. have nothing for you. Yeah, take of the century. Um, but make sure you have some friends. Get some friends on it, and it's a really fun time. Mm. And then you can laugh. Have some out. friends in general. Just have some friends in general, guys. Life advice from HGO. Have some friends. Um, <laughs> moving on, Kyle. What else have you been playing? What's the other game you've been playing mainly? So I have been playing Devil May Cry the Fifth. Oh my god, it's actually Devil May Cry talk that isn't old. Wow, let's go. DM oh no, me. we're still going to talk about 3 a little bit. Uh, New Year's resolution. You don't get off that <laughs> easily, Ethan. <laughs> Fine, I'm pulling out the P5 again. Here we go, boys. No. <laughs> oh man. Hey, if go you're for gonna, it, dude. If you're going to fuck with the rules, so will I. <laughs> P5. I it's played that for again. comparison's sake, Ethan. But it's no, not anyway. just because I want to talk play, about Devil May Cry 3, the greatest game of all time, every day of my existence. Right, you've been playing DMC5. You specifically have been playing the special edition DLC as well. Um, Correct. Which means you have an even newer take than Hunter. <gasps> wow. I do. Yeah, I still haven't played a spiritual yet. Because, wow. Because you know, I'm eventually going to get a PS5. Because and... he's, waiting, he's waiting to do the Ethan strategy of... Why pay small amount for the DLC now when I can pay for the whole game again, five head? <laughs> <laughs> Which I am completely fine with because if the if because any time Atlas rings their fucking bell, I'm there like a fucking dog, <clears throat> like a fucking Pavlov stuff. Pavlov. Yeah, Pavlov's dog. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, Devil May Cry Five. I don't think it really needs much of an introduction. It's Devil May Cry, more but more. There's three characters to play as, Dante, Nero, and V, and also now Virgil. V, oh, no. Yeah, dude, all, V. All, all, I th- all I think now is Cyberpunk, dude. That's all I think about. Uh, oh, no, no, no. No, no, this V is v, cool. V is definitely, he stole this, yeah, he's cool. He's cool. Mm. Okay, he's got, I'll take He's got away. a petting zoo. Very cool, right, so for any, so... He's for, got a book. He's got he's a got book. A, gosh, you're sounding <laughs> he read, You can just read a book in the middle of battle. <laughs> You're selling me on yeah, this game. Yeah, the dude now. reads his book while he, his <laughs> demons do the fighting for him. It's like a total flex on them. It's great. Oh, you're selling great. me, dude. You're selling me. Go on. Anyway. Yeah, dude, great game. You can so read a book. I've always wanted to read. <laughs> it's just like Persona, dude. You can do all the Let's things see. you can't do in real life. Oh, like, 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 like read, read books and, and ride a van. And, yeah. And have proper ga- grammar. <laughs> <laughs> I, honest, I honestly think I have some kind of speech, like, like speaking <laughs> problem, you know? Like, my mind doesn't, con- like, my like, my mind just doesn't formulate sentences correctly in my mind sometimes, so sometimes I'll get halfway through a sentence and my brain will just go, time to fuck up, because I've got a whole new way of thinking about <laughs> it. It's probably a kind of stutter or something that I have, but hey, <laughs> there you go. 
Enough about me being terrible at speaking and writing. <laughs> the MC5. So, DMC5 is very fun. I enjoyed the game even more than I was expecting to. Um, um, the three different characters were something I thought I wasn't really going to enjoy because, you know, Dante is the greatest character to play as in anything. And I thought that, like, being forced to play with Nero and V, I'm like, okay, this isn't fun. When do I get to Dante? When do I get to have fun and do cool things? And do cool flips and hit things with a motorcycle? When is that part? But to my surprise, Nero was really, really in-depth, which kind of carries through through the whole game. Like, the game gives you way too many combat options and says, here you go, figure it out. Here's your tools, you yeah, you do the cool. rest. Which I really enjoyed. I like all that freedom in combat. <laughs> the world is yours, kid. It Basically. <laughs> Exactly. Even when you beat the game, uh, Nero unlocks his devil trigger, and it, it, that, that just opens up even more stuff for him to do. It's a whole new world for him. It's great. Gener <laughs> Honestly, yeah. But, yeah, game's a ton of fun, and then... And then... That's even ex exemplified with Virgil, when you get to play with him. If you want to shell over $5, he does. Or, in Hunter's case, buy a whole console. <laughs> Dude, it's worth it. You can use them as pillows. <laughs> Listen, man, I'm gonna get it, the console. It looks like a because... pillow, dude. The more I look at it, it on its it really side, does. it looks like a pillow. I'm like, <laughs> I'm about to sleep on you if your stand wasn't shit and it would fucking fall over instantly, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Virgil. Virgil's great. He's got all of his weapons from DMC3 and also 4. He's got his motto, he's got his his punchies, and he's got the the Dante sword. Yeah. I know it's not the Dante sword, but now it's just, now it's just a fake Force Edge because yeah. Force Edge becomes Sparta. It's just the spectral version now, isn't it? <laughs> Looks kind of gross, not gonna lie. I missed the original. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. But the original yeah. is stuck being part of Dante's sword now. <laughs> it's very sad. I, I do like how Virgil plays, though. They really... I didn't play 4, but they compared to 3, they really revamped his moveset and made everything have a purpose, which I really enjoy that in Hack and Slashes, when it feels like all of your tools have a reason to be there. Because mm -hmm. I remember uh, DMC3, he has one move with the Force Edge where he just throws it, and it just flies around everywhere. Oh, yeah, round trip. Round trip, yeah. Mm. And DMC5, they changed it so that he throws it and it just spins around in front of him really, really fast. So it's like a buzzsaw that just does a oh, lot of damage nice. over time. And it's really cool looking. <laughs> um, your summon sword's just as strong as ever. And then Virgil also has this move where he can call like eight summon swords on each side of him and fling them all. Which he had that in three oh, as yeah. well. And... It was so useless. <laughs> like, it looked cool, but man, it was pointless. Nice. Ah, he's also got a move where he can make it rain it got summon swords from the sky. Before. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's got a move where... There's the one where he can, like, circle them around the enemy. Mm-hmm. Get him mm -hmm. that way. He has that, too. It's great. But yeah. Combat, super, super fun. Super addictive. I think that probably my least favorite part of the game is the large-scale bosses. A lot of them don't feel very intuitive, and they don't, at least on first, like I first played through, they don't feel very intuitive. They don't really respond to being hit as much as they did back in DMC3, mm -hmm. which I think is kind of a kind of a missed opportunity, but it's still fun. I still have a ton of fun with the game, and both campaigns are capped off with two of the greatest final bosses ever. I will not be accepting criticism right now. Uh, I've only got one fact check so far. 
The only fact oh, check I bad. have is I looked it up, and you said that Dante is the most fun character to play as in anything ever, and uh, it says here that that's a lie, and that it's actually the Bug Snacks people that are the most <laughs> fun characters to play as in a game ever. Okay, Just fine. Like to keep, we like to keep things factual here on Hot Games. On this uh, video. I'm also, sick I'm not, of you. I'm, not, I'm, also, I'm not gonna lie. I was like, I was listening, and I was really intently listening at some point, but then I noticed the reflection of my on my hair because I haven't washed my hair. I'm sorry, guys. I haven't washed my hair, <laughs> so it's a bit greasy. So I keep thinking, is that my forehead in the gap, or is it the shine of the light? And it is the light, but I'm like, I just, I've been fixated on it, so I'm sorry, Kyle. I was listening for the first half, I promise. It's okay, Kyle. I've been listening to you the whole time. No, I'm used to Ethan just but zoning out good, whenever though. talking. No, it did sound good, though. I do plan <laughs> oh, on playing DMC5 oh, eventually. Blah, blah, blah. I do plan on it. Cool. I plan on playing DMC5 when, on PS5 at some point, when it's cheap. Because, uh, gotta save that money because Boris <laughs> won't let me work. <laughs> Chronic. But no. Glad you enjoyed it. I think, I think I've said my piece. Yeah. Game's great. I, I'll i boot the game up to fight those final bosses again. Mostly just, they're so intuitive. Uh, they're so yeah. well done. <laughs> yeah. I love them. They're so they're good. They're so good. Dante, especially, is a crazy <sighs> final boss. I haven't, I haven't been able to fight Dante yet, but I have. <laughs> four gives me a good idea of how great that fighting Dante with Virgil is going to be. <laughs> oh yeah, like they oh, don't man. nerf Dante when he becomes a boss compared to what you can do as a player, and that is yeah, fantastic. Like he will walk up to you, shout you know, royal Dante guard, being the greatest character in the history of anything ever. <laughs> as a player does not change when he's against you and that's terrifying oh yeah yeah. (laughs) like very few things make me as afraid of him as him walking up to you announcing royal guard and i just have to back off and be like okay i know how this goes i know what to do and i'm gonna go this way you keep coming this way i'm gonna go this way cool cool we cool dante we cool thank you (laughs) Please, please back off and throw swords at me. Throw sword beams. Change to gunslinger, please. <laughs> Change to gunslinger. <laughs> that one I sucks. I understand all of these references. Um... Actually, gunslinger in five isn't. It is. I didn't it's use it's it good. Like a whole lot, but I liked using it. I liked using it more than I did in the other two. Yeah, I used it more here than I'd ever did in three. So. Good like work. double rocket launchers, putting them together for the laser. Oh. That was cool. <laughs> yeah. uh, the shotgun let you do the flippity doos, and that was a lot of fun. <laughs> right, moving on. Uh, Hunter, <laughs> I couldn't think of a good segue. I couldn't think of a good segue, and I'm still fixating about my fucking hair. Hunter. Oh my god, Ethan. <laughs> Hunter, what's your other game? I forgot I still had a game left to talk about, but yeah, we <laughs> just rim. 13 sentinels or whatever the order is it's either aegis it's, rim it's, first it's 13, or 13 sentinels, sentinels aegis rim uh or no, as i like to call it the game that never goes on sale in europe um it is <laughs> currently bad, it is currently like on half sale price all the time here actually i do like it. it's currently on sale but it's not fucking much it's like 35 instead of 50 pounds i'm like that's not as much of a sale as i've seen it go in the u.s already this is not fair but anyway Go on, Hunter. Okay, so I've sentences. played a few hours of 13 Sentinels. What's the gist? I've gotten out of the prologue. Essentially, it's this... Uh, okay. It's it's a majority visual novel, plus this kind of strategy-type RPG thing mm-hmm. as well, mixed in there. Like, that's the combative element in the game, is this... I don't know if it's necessarily an RTS, because technically you're... Like, things are always moving, but... Mm-hmm not everything's happening strictly in real time. Like your characters all have like, it's kind of like final fantasy games that have the ATV meter, not necessarily the one from seven remake, but like the other <laughs> ones where the enemies would be doing stuff and you're waiting for your character's meter to fill up so that mm-hmm. you can do things, you know, mm-hmm. it's yeah. like that. Yeah. But with like a movement grid as well. <clears throat> and maybe it's just because I'm still early on in the game, but it, doesn't feel like it's making me think very much i'm just kind of going 
which attack is going to hit the most things. And then I do that. And <laughs> I'll do it enough times and things die. Yeah. So Ethan will be able to just kind of slog his way through the combat if he decides yeah. to play this game so he can get the story. That's the spirit. You'll love to see it. We got some unga bunga for you, unga Ethan. Unga bunga, yeah. Monkey brain, dude. I'm crushing my hair. Yeah. I'm crushing my hair. <laughs> I'm going to have to turn my webcam. Yeah, fair. That fixed it! Yes! Right, moving on. Carry on. God, you're a genius. Nice. So that's the combative element. Who knows Who knows if it will get harder throughout the game? I'm not sure. Or maybe I'm sure it I will. Really I'm sure want. it will somewhat. Yeah. yeah. Probably. It's an Atlas game. They're and always hard. Ever bothers. Well, Atlas only published it. It's made by Vanillaware as the developer. Oh, oh snap. I did not yeah. know that. Learn wow. something yeah, new. Learning on HGO. <laughs> It's an educational yeah. podcast. And then the story is this Can wacky time travel type of thing. Oh, God, time travel. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, so it's not like... It doesn't seem like it's stupid Kingdom Hearts time travel. It seems like okay. it's being... It's not? Oh, no, I'm turned off. No. <laughs> like, so... It's weird because the prologue was very pushing a lot of pieces into place, introducing you to characters, like, ver at a very quick pace. So, like, mm -hmm. I barely had time to set with one person to, like, understand what was going on, but I feel like now that I've... Now that I'm allowed to, like, select my people and enjoy their story in whatever pace I desire, mm -hmm. except for they lock off some things here and there to, like, I guess make sure you don't just get one person's story all the way done and then figure out part of it. Uh I see. But so it's this wacky like sci-fi time travel type of thing where aliens or something in the future, which is where the combat happens, like invade Earth and you're fighting them with these giant mechs. And all of the uh stories oh, around nice. that seem to be what led up into that <clears throat> and or the dystopian future of the aliens won and wrecked the planet type of thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the way I I think the best way to describe it is there's like it's like Octopath in a way because there's a bunch of different like protagonists that you select except it's all like interwoven together and they actually interact like the stories interact with each other mm -hmm. rather than Ooh. just slight allusions to things that the characters never react to. <laughs> so uh after the prologue, it seemed like it opened up this really cool type of mystery that might be going on, and oh man, I like mysteries, so... Mm. Who done it? Figuring this game out. I don't know if it's necessarily that kind of mystery, but like it's a <laughs> non linear yeah, type like of a, thing yeah, that you're trying to... So I'm sitting here like intently reading the little like blurbs about things that they give you so I can maybe see where things are going a little better now yeah. that I can do things at my own pace. But I'm fascinated with it. The gameplay is definitely, so far, the weakest part, but it's not, like, in the way of anything, I wouldn't say. I just kind of do it. Yeah. Like, the story there is fascinating enough, and I've never... So, it's serviceable in that regard. I've, I've Like, I mean, it got nominated for Best Story at the game mm -hmm. awards and no yeah. one had played it so that's kind of a, fe that's kind <laughs> of a feat of the story must be good is the thing that and to be fair that's all i've heard from people that have played it they're like they have been very much been the loud kind of audience to be like play it play it play it play it because apparently it's really <laughs> good the story's really good um oh the art style is really good too it like, does have a good art it's style it's really cool yeah it's this really cool hand-drawn 2d type of thing <laughs> very snazzy i like it a lot very cool very cool again another game on my list i'll play i'll buy atlas when you let me buy it for a reasonable price because it's another atlas game where they made like five physical copies in europe um so that's never going down in price physical's never going down in price so i've got to get it digitally <laughs> when atlas lets me so we'll see we'll see kyle finally you have played something else to wrap it up i've got nothing else guys i genuinely don't <laughs> so we're just gonna move straight to kyle <laughs> to wrap it up in terms of games i think i've done the maths correctly um i believe so because hunters you look perplexed hunter by that was your last game i'm I, certain you know it was my last game i didn't remember that kyle had another game yes either. he does he, ha he he broke a promise 
Oh, this was never a thing we agreed on. That doesn't count. Uh, What did you play? So, I did it, finally, listeners. I was going to say chat, we're not streaming. But I did it, finally. I played Xenoblade Chronicles Future Connected. Boo. You broke promise. And and by that I mean I finished the half of the game that I left off at. (laughs) Because I was when I stopped playing it, apparently I was like halfway into the halfway done with it already. Ah, so you did play half of it. Yeah. Okay. More or less. You got f- so really. I was under the impression that all of us had just played like an hour of it and got bored. I played. I played ninety minutes, I think, and I was <laughs> like, "This is doing nothing for me." So goodbye. I don't care about the story of these two Nopons. They can fuck off. So oh, don't worry. They don't have a story. Yeah, but they... they're just there. Yeah, but it felt like no one else had a story either. So I was like, uh... you didn't get to the story. <laughs> I'm sorry. If I play, if it's a ten hour thing and I haven't got to the story within ninety minutes, like they could have at least started it by ninety minutes in. Do you not know how Xenoblade pacing works? Le- it takes us a while to get anywhere. Yeah, but it was didn't even have like that bad voice acting to complain about, you know, to at least bring me through it, to at least <clears> make <throat> me laugh. But anyway, what do you think of Future Connected then, Kyle? What do you think? So, honestly, I left with the same impression I had of it when I left it the first time. It's aight. <laughs> it's there. It's a fun little 10-hour <laughs> romp if you feel like doing that, and if you don't, that's fine. It's just a supplementary thing. Yeah. If, especially, like, if you're not big on Melia, especially. Like, that, the focus is all on her. This is her story about... About saving... About... I don't want to phrase this. It's about... Getting her... Her kingdom back. Yeah. After the events of the main story, basically. Yeah. It's concluding so, Melia's arc, essentially. Yeah. Because the main game couldn't do that, because we were too busy giving her the shaft. That's the spirit! Hey. <laughs> Woo! Uh, but no. Poor Melly! <laughs> Woo! But no. Um, <laughs> I think the main problem with Future Connected was how poorly advertised it was. It was both... Yeah. They advertised it as if, oh, this is... This is both the successor story to the original, but it, they also acted as if it was like, this is really important, and you yeah. really need to finish it, as it's going to be the I don't future know. of the franchise or whatever. And it... Right, I don't know if this is just, like, my weird memories, but I remember hearing that it was going to, like, connect the two games together, and, like, which, connect the whole series. Yeah, which was, they were already connected, but... Which, that was a fucking lie, yeah, if it... I'm remembering right. <laughs> No, I remember. Well, I remember because I got that bored that I just I I I got that bored of Future Connected's gameplay loop that I then went to YouTube to watch the cutscenes and then nothing was happening in those either. So then I went and just read a fucking description of what happened and went, "Oh, cool! I missed nothing. Really cool. Yeah, missed, like, really like, nothing. There's no allusions to Xenoblade Two, Xenoblade X anywhere." Or even further back into the Xeno series with Xeno Saga and Gears. Like, it's just Melia's story through and through. Doesn't get any more complicated than that. No. It'll be interesting to see. Um, it'd be funny if it did end up being important in some weird way. I mean, way. it might. Alchemoth may come back Xenoblade and be important three. in 3. Yeah. Yeah, in Xenoblade 3, which Nintendo will 100% make at some point because got nothing bad and to i do. will and i will happily hand over money for that i mean same but monolith soft can do no wrong yeah and you can hold me to that yeah 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 eh? yeah 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 it's not even like like i said it's yeah. not even bad it's just <laughs> <laughs> That's the episode. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thank you. It's uh, not bad, but, no. but there's not really motivation to play it if you don't really want to. The, yeah, like, like, mm-hmm. like, like I said, it's all supplementary. It's not important at the moment. Mm-hmm. It's not not imperative that you play it. 
just if you're bored like I was and you're like, well, might as well do this now. Time to bust out. It's there. Uh, while we are on the topic, Zamboy, I just want to say this because I thought it was a fucking hilarious fact. Was Age of Calamities taking me longer to beat than Xenoblade? I got through Xenoblade. Wait, what? Yeah, I got through Xenoblade in 32 you're... hours. I'm 35 hours you're into right. Calamity. I have like, f- I, th- I think my uh, Age of Calamity hour counts is a little bit of, of past where you are now. And that is longer than it took me to beat Xenoblade. Yeah, it, it's, it's funny. It just made me laugh because I was like, it's very much the smaller game. How, I, well, I'm sure if I critical pathed Calamity, Age of it, took Calamity like, yeah, it, took like it would be hours. significantly shorter than it took me to beat Xenoblade. It's yeah. just I did yeah. all the extra stuff <laughs> in Age of Calamity. I just, it, yeah, it, was more, it wasn't more of a, oh, how did I get... How was, calamity take me so long it's like how did i ru- how did i get through fucking xenoblade that quickly that was what i thought was funny because i didn't skip cutscenes or anything you cheated like and got to level 50 oh yeah that's how i did it i cheated and got to level 50 that's how i did it but i still played it on normal and still died that's been patched out now by the way <laughs> glad i did that's it. not a thing anymore it's a good thing we I also want to, I, I, right, I, I also do want to point out the fact that when I cheated and got to level 50, I didn't do it from the You were already start. at, like, Sword Valley. No, I was way past it. I went back and did the glitch in my level, thir- in my level late level 20s, early 30s, because I was fed up with grinding. So I went back and did it. <laughs> it wasn't a, um, it wasn't a, because you can, basically, you can go from, like, level 10 to level 50 straight away, if once you get from that area. Yeah. I didn't do that. I did get to, like, 30s on. I was like, fuck the grinding. I'm just going to do it so I still have to grind. Mm. But no. And still, Hunter didn't also, grind. And he was only, like, and Hunter was only, like, four hours slower than me. <laughs> we're <just> speedrunners, <laughs> yeah. Hunter. We were born to, we were born to get through these games easily. Also, while we're talking about Xenoblade... Mm-hmm. What color is Shulk's jacket? Yeah, is it red that? or pink? What do you guys oh, think? Because Ethan's dumb and thinks it's pink. No, I want to specify yeah, what... this. I want to specify. Which color is it, audience? <laughs> Which one? I want to specify that Kyle think Kyle is adamant that it is red, and I am adamant because it is. The Monado is red, and that Shulk has a pinkish colored top that is more pink than red and the Monado is like a crimson red and shulk is a dark red no that that's not fucking dark buddy boy that ain't fucking dark that's not i'm looking at a picture right now that is dark it's pink yes back me up on this fuckers i'm not dying i'm dying on this hill who am i taking with me everyone good hunter wears red shulk wears pink We've done it. No. Thank you. Do he red. doesn't. True. Rest my case. Uh, I, 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 have, I, I, Go I, set I, Ethan straight. I've also stated that at best, when the light does not make it look br- like basically pure pink, that at best, in some of the screenshots slash character drawings, it's a maroon at best, not a red a maroon turn closer on the pinker side than on the Ethan. maroon is red and brown maroon hunter is a shade of red yeah it's close yeah. it's closer to brown than it is to red thank you thank you for your time um but i believe it relies more on that side than it does on pink i will die on this hill and if that isn't what hgo is all about i don't know what is um there we go We've talked. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Let us know your thoughts on who you think. Or hit us up on Twitter. Yeah, who do you think is more colorblind? Let us know in the comments section. (laughs) (laughs) And remember, audience. It's it's red. It's not, it's pink. It's it's red. It's pink. Like this card. Or is this card red? It's pink. It's hard to tell. Yeah, with the the computer screen made it hard to tell. It is red. Uh, yeah, it does actually make it hard to call. This is red. No, it's pink. Oh, fuck it. I'm colorblind. Anyway. Case closed, everybody! It's, it's not. Cornered! This is pink. This is Play pink. the Ace Attorney music. This is pink. Look, guys, let's do it. No, I'm not doing it. I don't know how to That was Anyway, this has been a clusterfuck of an That was more like Snake Man. Yeah. It's been fun, though. That was more, yeah. This has been a clusterfuck of an episode. Right. 
Thank you. <laughs> can I outro the fucking show so I can go and play no. the end of Hyrule? Thank you. Uh, right. No. Thank you, everyone, for listening or watching. You can, uh, as always, uh, find us on Twitter at Top Gamers Only for all updates. Uh, and hey, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel at bit.ly slash HGOYT. Um, five letters. Can you memorize them? Uh, if, you, if you can, <laughs> if you can memorize five letters, guys, you can get to the YouTube channel. Uh, I just realized that my fucking mouse was over Hunter's face then, so sorry, Hunter. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> but there you go. And make sure to make sure to follow us on podcast Sorry. services and leave a nice review. Uh, with that, Hunter, where can people find you? YouTube.com slash ReaperHunter23. And Kyle, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at KDavisSRL or on Twitch at twitch.tv slash k davis srl i was running out of breath i That's forgot to i forgot uh, how to breathe and as always you can find me i've uh, uh well at chaotic Aether on both twitter and on twitch uh with that thank you ever so much for listening slash watching we'll be back next week with our predictions for 2021 uh our predictions slash bets slash tragedy that will be next week's episode <laughs> but with that uh that has been this week uh we'll be back next time for more same time same place 5 p.m uk time 12 p.m eastern I haven't said that this week thought i'd get away with it no sir um but with that that's been our show thank you ever so much for hanging out with us this week we'll be back soon but until next time bye take care toodaloo